So, I recently got a drone. Things are going great. And while most people use their drones to capture footage or just for fun, I've been using mine for the past two months to capture free energy. Free energy, Jay? There is no free energy. Okay, so maybe free is a relative term. You see, directly above our heads is a power source that literally nobody would expect. The atmosphere itself. Specifically, there's a voltage gradient that exists between the earth and the sky at all times. It can be hijacked for power, and this was my journey to do so. Hey, I'm Jay, and welcome back to Plasma Channel. If this is your type of science, consider subscribing and turning on those notifications. To extract energy from the atmosphere, Indiana here volunteered as tribute. I'm using the DJI Mini 2, which I freaking love. It's super light, has a 4K camera, and is foldable. It's basically like a flying burrito controlled by my phone. Anyways, I was pleased to learn how resistive it is to my abuse, and the thing actually has a carrying capacity of half of a pound, which is insane considering it weighs half a pound. So I built this little wire harness made of fishing line and, hey, acrylic that'll hang about a meter below the drone and carry this electrode up into the sky. This allows me to use the drone's camera to spy on the top of the electrode just to see if anything crazy happens at height. The harness, electrode, and wire only weigh 70 grams, so lift isn't an issue. I'll be using a few tools to visualize any energy we harvest. The first tool is a classic foil electroscope. When it's charged to a few kilovolts DC, the foil leaves actually repel each other. I found above about 8 kilovolts, and they actually stick to the glass. Second, a Franklin bell, which uses static repulsion to create linear motion. When one can is charged and the other can grounded, the ball bounces back and forth. Lastly is a Corona motor of my design. This uses static repulsion and attraction to create rotational energy. Charge one side, ground the other, it spins. Let me know if you'd like a build video for this. To aid with video, I enlisted the help of my friend Jordan. He uses this flying DSLR to study whale dynamics and populations. It's really cool. Check out his work on Instagram because the work's incredible, as you can see. I'll place his link down below. So Jordan's drone, a little bit bigger than mine, and it's gonna be the main force behind all the cinematic shots that you're gonna see. I have no idea if this is actually gonna work, but tomorrow I'm gonna find out. Let's go for it. Please don't kill me. What could possibly go wrong? <laughs> it's doing it. I see this going bad real fast. While the drone sat at 100 meters, I established an electrical ground and connected the sky wire to an isolated base. The base then connected to the electroscope, but <laughs> nothing really happened until I shocked myself. Oh, ow. Yeah. You want to feel it? Not really, but okay. As cool as that was, I couldn't get any sparks on camera and the electroscope didn't budge. So while Indiana sat up there, we discussed what we should have been seeing and even though, yeah, it was the first time for me, I figured something wasn't right. Ah, uh, that didn't really work like I would have hoped. Um, you could hear the static on the wire and the top of the electroscope. So, I mean, that kind of tells us there's potential here. Um, but Jordan and I, you know, we were talking, it's pretty humid today. so. You know, pretty strong chance the humidity is leaching away some of that charge. So I think I need more charge and therefore that means a bigger electrode. So this was the original electrode, didn't work well. Today I'm trying this guy. Twice as many ionization points and double the surface area to collect energy out of the sky. Uh, I'm pretty excited about it, so let's give it a try. That is looking a lot better. Way more balanced. That electrode is huge. <laughs> I'm really feeling good about this one. 
Oh, see? See, there's the static charge. <laughs> charging, charging, look at that, look at that. Thousands of volts. And then discharging it. Oof. Electroscopes rely on repulsion of like charges. Both pieces of foil are electrically connected to the sky, so they share a positive charge and basically give each other the cold shoulder. And I got really lucky this day. There was zero wind, which would not happen next time. But at this point, the drone was out of battery, so I had to call it for the day. <laughs> it actually worked, right? And in my experience, that was maybe three, 4,000 volts. But keep in mind, the voltage differential increases the higher up you go. We were only at 100 meters. That kind of makes you think. So ultimately, the spacing and the number of ionization points is what matters. But it still didn't produce much current, though. Luckily, the Krona motor doesn't take much current to spin. It's actually one reason why these are called atmospheric motors. Knowing the setup draws power, we terrorized one final park. This time I plan to test the Franklin Bell and the Corona motor. There's a bit of a wind today. Uh, Jordan and I had to find a second park to go to. Uh, the wind's gonna blow this around like crazy. So it's gonna be kind of a test of what this little tiny drone can actually put up with while dragging a wire 100 meters, 150 meters up into the sky. So let's do it though. Ow! Woo! Don't kill me! Oh. Peace. Wind is super strong right now. So if you look in the center of the screen right now, you'll notice the basket's being blown almost entirely out of the field of view. That's because the wind is just gusting up there. So, 100 meters. All right, I'm gonna stop at 115 and hold steady. All right, it didn't blow up yet. Oh, by the way, meet the aerial film crew. I just thought this was a cool shot. Oh, yeah, I'm getting shocked right now. This time I just used the electroscope as a quick voltage check. Woo! Now that's a few thousand volts right there. All right, let's see if there's enough current to make this Franklin Bell work. Oh, 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 dude! Freaking working, buddy! Yeah. It's a really cool process. The aerial wire places a positive charge on this can, which then influences the foil ball to deliver electrons from the grounded can, which is directly connected to Earth. The clouds finally opened up, so I connected up the Corona motor. Like before, one side was connected to ground, while the other was attached to the aerial wire. And after just a few seconds... Hey, hey, she's spinning! <laughs> this is just remarkable. It never really spun that fast, but I just sat and enjoyed the miracle. I mean, I quite literally was siphoning energy straight from the atmosphere. This motor was operating off of several kilovolts, which you could actually hear if you stopped the motor and brought your finger near the aerial wire. That's the sound of coronal discharge. Oh. Not long after, the wind started picking up, so we packed up. It's honestly the craziest thing, and you know, if you're anything like me, you're gonna wonder, where the hell does all this energy come from? There's no such thing as free energy, right? I'll give you a hint, it has to do with that voltage gradient I mentioned earlier. Well, I think Mehdi says it best. The voltage gradient between Earth and the sky is fairly linear, starting with zero at Earth and increasing by around 100 volts per meter. And it can be shown by these equipotential lines representing the voltage gradient. All the conductive objects connected to ground though, like people, trees or buildings, or even this wire that J guy wants to send to the sky are at zero volts, which means these equipotential lines will have to curve around them. But these equipotential lines become increasingly more compressed around the grounded object the higher it is. 
In other words, the intensity of electric fields it experiences increases with height. Now, if sharp electrodes are present beside intense enough electric fields, the air molecules are ionized that suck electrons from ground through the wire into the electrodes into the positive ions of air. So just like that, we can create electric current. So since the electrode was at about 115 meters, we should have produced close to 11,000 volts of electricity. Now, in reality, it was about half that because the setup I made is super lossy, but I really don't care. The physics is super cool, and we got repulsion, linear motion, and rotational motion out of energy pulled from the sky. What more do you want? In the end, this is a really exotic power source that we've actually known about for more than a century. German inventors created this sketch of their power generation facility published in Science and Invention in 1922. You'll notice balloons are used as the method to keep the wires up at height. Maybe we should uh, revisit this ancient concept. Let me know your thoughts in the comments down below and leave a suggestion for something you'd like to see me try powering using atmospheric electricity. Don't forget to subscribe and thank you for watching. You stay classy.